So the Wu Jing is an Alsace, all right? It is a carbon copy, copy pasted Alsace. So that's the tier nine French battleship. And it's very, very, very good. <laughs> so if you're not interested in grinding the French line at all, that doesn't interest you, or you're looking for a tier nine premium ship, it is a solid option. Obviously, you can get the same performance for free in the uh, in the Alsace at uh, tier nine on the French tree. And honestly, those battleships are pretty solid these days, thanks to Deadeye making a lot of their somewhat poor dispersion guns, at least at lower tiers and mid tiers. Uh, Republic's always been pretty accurate, but the mid tier ones seem to have kind of wonky dispersion. But that's kind of been fixed by Deadeye. They have pretty solid concealment, and you get a nice speed boost to either throttle jockey, kind of to dodge shells, or you can get into positions way quicker. This ship has 380mm guns, so you're not going to really be overmatching much at this tier. But against broadsides, it's pretty disgusting for the most part, um, unless people get really lucky. You're going to be smashing people's broadsides. You saw that Freddy take like a 26k salvo. Siegfried got lucky. It happens, um, but because it's a battleship. But eventually, people will get punished by this ship. Now, I really, really, really enjoy 12-gun battleships. I don't know why. I just like them a lot more than a uh, than the 8-gun or 6-gun battleships that are in the game. Um, even the 9-gun ones. They just feel more powerful to me. Even though I know that the smaller... Uh, all that matters is the number of gun hits or shells that hit the target and 12-gun battleships generally have worse dispersion, so you hit less shells. I just like them for some reason. And the really special part about a ship like this is your ability to push quickly, flank quickly, or disengage quickly. So if you're someone who uh, struggles to position your ship or struggles to know where you should be at different points in the battle, um, this would be a good ship for you. Uh, the speed allows you to make decisions later and still be effective. Um, a ship like the Vermont is really challenging, I think, because positioning is so hard, because you're so slow. But a ship like this, the Wujing, you can get into positions really quickly and catch destroyers as they're trying to escape. And I have taken... Uh, gun feeder, I believe it's called now. So that's why I was able to switch to HE really quickly and smash this gearing for most of his HP. Um, I make a mistake and I swap to AP though here. I should have kept with HE and just finished the gearing off. I don't know why I thought the Georgia would get him or something like that, but uh, I was thinking, oh, I need to swap to AP for the Wu Jing coming in on the enemy team to try and citadel him as he attacks our Georgia. I should have just stayed with the the HE to finish off the gearing. I would have had more than enough time, but I didn't. Small misplay there. But a ship like this does have turtle back. So the enemy Wu Jing, it's possible to Citadel, but it's not super likely. You saw where I was aiming though. I was aiming for the turrets. That is the most reliable way to Citadel a French battleship. Uh, for whatever reason, I've found that shooting a French battleship under the turrets is way, way, way more reliable or likely way to citadel them than shooting underneath the smokestacks. Uh, Republic is probably the best example of this. Um, speed boost saving our life here, which is really, really nice. Speed boost is so, so, so nice for these stop-go type of deal situations where you need to dodge torpedoes, you need to get behind cover quickly. Um, the AA on the ship isn't bad. But, I mean, it's a Lexington. It's a whole tier lower than me, so we should be doing okay against it. But it's nothing really that special or that much to write home about. Playing this ship is about positioning. Like most battleships, but this one only has 32 millimeters of armor everywhere. So you don't get a massive amount of armor to shatter HE. Uh, if you're facing a Musashi or a Yamato, you're just going to get overmatched. Uh, Shikishima as well, of course. So you got to be a little bit careful. And because of your massive amounts of speed, you can actually get yourself into trouble really, really, really quickly, <laughs> I've found. Uh, 
If you overcommit to a flank, you'll die very, very fast. There you go, some pretty solid dispersion. The Dead Eye skill really, really helps out some of these ships that have mediocre dispersion. I should talk about the secondaries really quickly. They're really not worth taking. I know you've seen different games of me playing old Alsace with secondary builds before the 10.0 patch. Um, where it was a lot of fun to run IFHE on all these secondaries and just really go for it. They have really, 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 really bad dispersion now. They hardly hit anything, and you still have to invest quite a bit of points in it. You're giving up main gun dispersion. It, I just really, really don't think it's worth it. Especially if you get into a tier 10 game, which is quite campy and passive these days. I think the full build is going to be Concealment Deadeye, and then your choice of Fire Prevention or... Superintendent. That's really what it's going to be. I think I have tried this ship with the secondary build and it worked out okay, but that was mainly because I had broadsides and my main guns were putting in work. It wasn't because the secondaries were doing good, it's just because the base ship is just pretty good. And even if you put a secondary build on it, the base ship will do pretty good. Um, but you definitely want to buff this these main guns because they're just so nice. Even though they're only 380mm guns, they have massive amounts of pen for their caliber, so broadsides at long range aren't a huge issue to get through. Maybe a Kremlin or Yamato at long range are going to be the things that will shatter your shells on its belt, but most other ships, you're going to be able to Citadel at really, really long ranges, regardless of the, uh, regardless of the um, tier of the battleship. It's really, really, really nice to have. Now, should you get a Wujing? I don't know. I think it's a decent ship. I think if you got it as in the crates, if you're trying to get the Baji and you got it in the crates, I wouldn't be disappointed with this getting this ship at all. You've got yourself a premium Alsace, which is great. It's really fun. Uh, but the Baji is the real prize of the Pan-Asian uh, Lunar New Year... Is that what they're called? Lunar New Year crates? Um, because Baji is an Azumo, but better. Uh, this ship is exactly the same as the Alsace, whereas Baji has better Sigma, it has more range, but it has slightly worse reload than an Azumo. But as we all know, giving up a small bit of reload to get better dispersion, well, better Sigma, which results in better dispersion. The actual dispersion numbers are the same, but Sigma is the tendency to go towards the middle of that dispersion number. Uh, so better Sigma is always good, and that's why Baji is very good. And yes, we did just overpen that Zhao six times. So, it's a battleship. You're gonna be left frustrated a lot of the time when you face broadside cruisers. <laughs> it sucks. It's unfortunate. I hate it. But that's how battleships are these days. And that's how cruisers are as well. So if you're looking to play a ship class that can kind of get away with mistakes. Cruisers are a pretty good example of getting away with mistakes these days, as we overpen him three more times. Uh, to anybody who thinks cruisers are underpowered and need buffs, I wholeheartedly disagree. Um, yeah, I wholeheartedly disagree. Cruisers are in a very, very strong state, and have been for a long time. And honestly, they take very little damage from battleships these days, unless they... Uh, Unless you're overmatching them at long range when they're angled. Um, that is one way to guarantee full pens, but these days if you're in a cruiser, just go flat broadside. Especially at close range, Battleship will just overpen you. There, no sweat, honestly. Um, unless you're in a really, really thick cruiser, like a, mm, maybe a Moskva or something along those lines, like a big cruiser. You might want, not want to do that, but anything that's got a slim profile, just go broadside. That's the way this game is. They, uh, Wargaming seems to be in the mindset of allowing people to make bad plays and um, make bad decisions and get away with it. Which is not great for the long-term uh, playability of the game, and it's not great for teaching players to get better at the game. When there's not very much consistency in the game, it's hard to know what you're doing wrong and what you're doing right. Because consistency allows you to determine, okay, that was a bad move because I consistently get punished for doing this specific move. 
But if you're not consistently getting punished for those specific moves, well, how do you know it's wrong then? Um, and if you're not getting rewarded for flanking and catching people's broadsides, for example, um, if you're not getting rewarded for smart plays and playing well consistently, how do you know that they're smart plays? So I think that's part of the reason that um, it's hard to get good at this game, because you don't really know what the correct play is some of the time, because the consistency of this game just isn't there. So for me, I know on average I'm making a, the right play because I've just played enough battles and I've thought about this long enough. But for most people, you know, if you're just starting out with this game, how on earth do you know what's a good play and what's a bad play when there's no consistency, right? Just a side little rant thing there about the lack of consistency in this game. But back to the ship, it's very good. It's very, 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 very good. And if you're not willing to or you don't want to grind up a whole line for battleships um, and you want to try or see what the uh, French battleships are like um, at high tiers, this is a great ship, honestly. It's, it's really good. It's expensive, but it'll earn you credits like you'll see at the end of the battle. Keep in mind, I am running um, some flags on this ship as well as my uh, Kings of the Sea flag, which gives me an extra 15%, I think. 15% credits, something like that. So it is earning a little more than you would earn in your in your ship, but tier, some of these tier 9 ships make some pretty solid credits. Obviously not nothing comparing to Missouri. For those of you that know, that ship um, is kind of removed from the game. Not because it's overpowered, but oh, because it earns too many credits and it kind of breaks the economy. So, um, yeah, they, they're not making that mistake again with this one. That's not, that's not the case. But it, you can earn quite a few credits. Obviously, end game, late game pushing in to try and get that last little bit of damage, this ship is very good at. I should note the turret angles are pretty decent, both forward and backwards. You're not like a German battleship where you have to give flat broadside to get all of your guns off you do have reasonably good angles and because of your speed you're if you're wiggling a little bit like moving your rudder that kind of thing you're so fast that a lot of times people are going to miss your ship a lot of the time um, i should note interesting quirks about the french battleships are they actually that they take very little ap damage um when you're flat broadside there's i don't know this french black hole armor that just exists that I I don't know how it works but for some reason it's really difficult to deal massive damage to broadside republics Alsace's uh, John Bart's everything like that and this is this ship's no different since it's a carbon copy uh, of the Alsace it's it is crazy how little damage you can take when broadside at closer ranges, it's a little bit more guaranteed you're going to take a big hit, but at longer ranges, you can pretty much go you can go broadside and take very little damage. Um, so some of the time, the correct play is to actually go flat broadside to a Yamato at long range. That way, he's shooting at your belt that will sometimes, a lot of the time, just absorb the shells and they'll deal no damage. Because if you angle to a Yamato, it's just going to overmatch you and deal massive damage guaranteed. So some weird, uh, it, it's a weird thing to do. It's a weird way to think, to just turn broadside to people. Like there, where'd those shells go? Did we bounce an Iowa at that angle? I doubt it. He, he missed a little bit, to be fair. There you go, only 13,000 damage from his front two guns. Right, like 13,000 damage is all he got on my flat broadside. <laughs> Uh, I'm not saying I like this playstyle, I'm just saying that this is possible in this game. Or maybe this is bad gun. Regardless, it's it's a lot less damage than you would think you would get out of a broadside battleship at this, at this tier. So, it's a good ship, it's fun. I mean, this I think was my first game playing it, we got a Kraken. <laughs> and look at that, over, well over a million credits. Um, yeah, a pretty solid result, honestly. I have fun with this ship. I enjoy the speedy playstyle and fast maneuverability, and now the decent accuracy. This is a good ship, and the way I would set it up is pretty much uh, my standard battleship build. 
you can see here I was trying the full secondary kind of thing with IFHE and everything. You do get a reasonable range out of it, um, 12 kilometer range on the secondaries, but the accuracy was so bad with it that I just, I, I can't recommend you play like this. It's really, really not worth it for all of the skill points that you have to invest. So I would, I like a uh, gun feeder, um, and then I also would probably like AA skills because your AA isn't actually that bad. You get a decent rating, an okay range, um, so your continuous damage and your shell explosions are decent. Uh, you've got 9 flak, which is pretty good. Um, if you find pushing into torps is a problem, you could definitely run vigilance. If you want faster turret traverse, right, you get it down to 34.5, pretty solid. Um, or if you find you need a uh, party target, you can. This this row and this row, it's really your preference kind of thing on what you would want. I would do AA. Then I would also do Adrenaline Rush um, to start. That That's just free DPM, basically, as you get lower on HP. Don't take super heavy AP shells. It's really, really, really bad. Um, these other skills are decent. Um, with the full 21 points, I would probably take Expert AA Marksman next to get even better AA. Uh, I've been playing around with AA builds, and it seems like these two skills can help a little bit if your base AA is good enough. Obviously, we're taking Deadeye. Because we're taking Deadeye, we're obviously taking Concealment. And then it's up to you if you want Fire Prevention or Emergency Repair Expert, which, for whatever reason, I keep thinking is Superintendent. Uh, but Emergency Repair Expert gives you that extra heal, a um, little bit better heals, and allows you to come back and after taking some big hits early game, late game you're still going to have quite a bit of health left. Fire Prevention will help you to uh, not die when you overcommit. So it's up to you which one you take. I prefer this one. And that's the build I have right now since my captain only has 18 points as you can see. Obviously you can't use your French captains. You have to have Pan-Asian commanders. So this one is from my Gajamata. And you can see on my Baji I have uh, my Yu Yang commander. So uh, something to consider about buying this ship. You will want Pan-Asian commanders to be reasonably high level if you're going to be swapping commanders over, because you won't get a very good commander if you just straight buy this ship out. So that's how I would build the captain. And then modules. I run auxiliary armaments mainly due to the AA getting knocked out really quickly, and I hate having my AA all gone. If you find your turrets are dying, go main armaments. Uh, still on my secondary build, you can see, but this is you want aiming systems on this thing. Um, and then otherwise it's the same. You can see with the reload mod, you get down to a reasonably respectable 28.2. Um, just to talk a little bit about the original Alsace that was in the game, uh, it had a base reload, I believe, of 28 seconds base, and it had uh, 0.2 better Sigma. So original Alsace was kind of OP, and it was a ton of fun to play. With secondaries or with the gun aiming accuracy build. It was awesome. And then they nerfed it. And it's still awesome. <laughs> and in fact, um, because you have Deadeye, it's actually making it feel a little bit more like original Alsace. With a, with a bit worse reload. But it feels a little bit more like the original. And it feels pretty nice. So this is a good ship. Uh, I would recommend you get it if you're not wanting to grind for the Alsace. But... Realistically, you can get this ship uh, for free. Just go play the um, just go play the tech tree one, and it's the exact same. So, yeah, I don't think it's necessarily worth buying if you're willing to grind for this one. But if you happen to get it in a crate because you're going for the Baji, which is worth uh, getting, um, I think getting the Wujing is not a bad result if you're going for the Baji. Now to keep in mind, I'm not saying you should go do this. Um, a viewer, Jcraw, wanted to get the Baji himself and wanted me to have the Baji too, so we went and uh, kind of little bit halvesies on containers to get this ship, just to talk about it real quick, and uh, he bought 10 containers and I got nothing out of them. And then I bought 10 containers and I got nothing but camos, again. Camos, camos, both times, no ships. And then he bought 25. And then I finally got all four of the uh, 
all four of the Pan-Asian ships. So just as a bit of a disclaimer, uh, it's kind of, it's, it's all RNG. So if you see someone saying, yeah, I bought five containers and I got all four ships, they got very, very, very lucky. Uh, yeah, they got very lucky. So keep in mind, it is all RNG. Uh, I wish they would just sell all of these ships um, just for money straight up so that you can say, oh, I'll try some containers. Or if you're just willing to just buy the ship that you want straight up and be done with it. So that's the Wujing and a little bit on the other Pan-Asian ships. Uh, this is a good ship. Alsace is a very good ship this patch and it's a lot of fun. So definitely give it a shot if you have the French version or if you end up getting this version. It's a great ship. I would not feel bad about getting this one at all. So thanks for watching, guys, and I hope you have a great day.